Hey, we recently did a couple videos here that were walkthroughs of the schematic of a couple of uh, QRP transceivers. This MFJ Cub transceiver and this Heathkit uh, HW9. Uh, one of the questions that I got most often from both of these videos was uh, about the use of diodes as RF switches. Well, here's an example where uh, switches were used for the transmit receive path of the Cub transceiver. And then also in this uh, Heathkit, um, there was lots of uses of switches uh, here in the transmit receive path between uh, the bandpass filters and the low pass filter. There's another one used here as part of the transmit path. And uh, some diode switches used pretty extensively uh, here in the oscillator board to switch the various crystals uh, and, and resonant circuits into some uh, HFO uh, heterodyne frequency oscillators for the, uh, the premix oscillators and then also to switch in the appropriate uh, bandpass filters uh, for the, uh, the premix signal uh, to go into the first mixer. So uh, a lot of people have questions about using diodes as switches because most people think about diodes as rectifiers, okay, like, you know, following this typical characteristic, you know, forward voltage, the current flows, reverse voltage, no current flows, so it's a rectifier. So how do we use it as a switch? So one thing that uh, is apparent from all of these schematics that we did is that we were switching relatively small amplitude signals. Uh, receivables, that, you know, before they got amplified into the PA in the transmitter and the small signals in the receiver. So let's take a small signal view of what happens and it's, it'll become apparent of how we can use this as a switch. So um, let's uh, look at this simple little circuit here where I've got a bias voltage and a couple of resistors to limit the current uh, and uh, and we can see if we, as we change that bias voltage, okay, we'll reach a point where we turn the diode on and some current starts to flow, or we can reverse bias it and no current flows. But let's say we establish some DC bias point, okay, that will establish an operating point on this curve. Now, if we apply a small signal, say at the input here, that's really going to just represent a small variation, okay, of the bias point. Okay, that small variation of the bias point will result in a small variation in current. So that small variation in current will also allow that voltage to kind of appear on top of this resistor here. So that uh, essentially that small voltage that we applied basically just appears over here and the only really change that we've made is we've it's been shifted down by the diode voltage but the, the signal is still there. Now if we turn this bias voltage off, okay, say right down at this point, and then we applied that small signal again. That signal is so small that it doesn't reach the turn on voltage and therefore there's no change in output current. So essentially that signal gets blocked. So that's like opening the switch. So we can see you know, quite clearly even if we reverse bias it, same kind of a thing. So as long as the signal is small with respect to uh, the bias point, we can use this diode as a switch to switch these small signals. Okay, And again, that was the application in the QRP transceivers. Okay, let's take a little bit closer look at some of the considerations that you need to f look at when you think about this for dealing with RF signals or higher frequency signals. Okay, uh, so typically uh, in RF applications, a lot of times rather than using resistors um, to kind of block the signal from going and being sunk into the bias voltages and things like that, and a lot of times RF chokes will be used, or a resistor, or sometimes a series combination because you still might need a resistor to set the current but use an RF choke so that it, that, that allows uh, or blocks the RF from going up and down the bias lines. Okay, so a lot of times both will be used. And also for RF applications, typically the, the signals are AC coupled in, so we don't really care about the, bi the diode drop. Okay, so and then all, many times also the bias through the, through the diode might be controlled from you know, one side or the other. Okay. And for these small signal RF applications, and again, small signal being where the RF voltage or RF current is small with respect to the DC bias of the diode, the diodes that can be used are often just, just about anything. Switching diodes like these 1N914As or 4148s or even power diodes like a 1N4007, okay, they can all be used. So let's take a, an exam, a look at that. So I've got a signal coming out of my signal generator here at uh, 455 kilohertz. I picked that because it's a common IF frequency you'll find in uh, in transceivers. That's being coupled into uh, my circuit board here, a little proto board. So that's coming in through this capacitor on top of uh, this diode right here. This is a uh, 1N4007. I've got a DC voltage being applied through this resistor. I think I picked out of the junk box here. What is that? Looks like a 390 ohm resistor. 
okay there's my uh, 1 in 4007 and there's another 390 ohm resistor okay that's being uh, going to ground and I've got another capacitor coupling that signal out to this guy which is going off to the scope All right so if we take a look my uh, my signal out of the signal generator is on okay is it 50 millivolts peak to peak so it's a relatively small signal and uh, if I uh, kind of hold the camera right about here I think we can capture both the uh, the meter here which is reading uh, the current through the diode I'm on a 10 milliamp uh, scale here so we'll be able to read the meter and look at the the signal on the scope if I reach over and uh, grab the power supply here okay if I turn the power supply voltage up we can actually see the signal come up on the scope and I can see I'm just running at because uh, there's about two milliamps of forward current and there's my uh, my 455 kilohertz signal on the scope okay as I turn the current up we can see that going up on the meter we can see the amplitude kind of increasing slightly on that but uh, once we turn that diode on it's it's pretty well on we get down to very low current so we'll start seeing the amplitude on the scope dropping okay and we'll get distorted because we're just barely turning the diode on at that point but we can now see that once we get the diode turned on to some kind of DC level you know I've got uh, that signal passing through just fine so by simply controlling that power supply to turn the, uh, the diode off or turn the diode on and that's all I'm doing is just adjusting this power supply on and off okay we can essentially switch that RF signal on or off so that works just fine now I mentioned that uh, you can kinda use uh, you know any of these different types of diodes I've got this 4007 in here um, one way to think about it is that the diode in the off state kind of looks like this. There's a little bit of resistance and lead inductance, but it's pretty small. And it's typically a relatively small capacitance when the diode is off. That's really what it looks like. For these, uh, you know, the switching diodes, like the little 914 or 4148, that capacitance might be on the order of 1 or 2 picofarads. But for a larger, like, you know, power rectifier, like a 4007, that might be, you know, 40 or 50 picofarads or more. Okay, so you might have to worry about that because depending on what frequency you're operating at, that might make a difference. And essentially, when we turn the diode on, what you have is basically you're, you're essentially shunting this diode with a resistance. And that resistance actually is proportional to the current, right? Because the resistance is really just the slope of that IV curve, okay, is one way to think about it, okay, for in a small signal kind of uh, approximation here. So, um, so where can that be a problem? Uh, you know, in terms of this, this capacitance here. Like if we went to, instead of 455 kilohertz here, let's say I changed uh, the signal frequency here from 455 kilohertz to say uh, 8.83 megahertz. Okay, that's another common IF frequency. And if I look over at the scope, or at the meter, I've still got this thing off. There's no current going through this uh, diode right now. But you can see I've actually got a small signal going through there. Okay. Um, if I turn the bias up, okay, that comes on. But even when I turn that uh, the bias off and uh, turn the current all the way off through that diode, I'm still getting some current going through that uh, diode, or excuse me, some signal going through that diode because the capacitance is a little bit too large. Now, if I simply replace this diode with uh, one of those little switching diodes, let me yank this guy out of here. Okay, now they've got a switching diode sitting down here on the table. And uh, let's get the polarity right and kind of put him in in the circuit okay so now with him in the circuit with the bias turned off I see no signal at that 8.83 megahertz and if I turn the bias up on the diode you know, there it is now I can go see that so so for these higher frequency applications you would want to use a diode that has got a lower off state capacitance like the little switching diodes okay but all of this has been for these small signal applications we're going to talk in a moment about how to get around that and use pin diode switching for larger signals. But first let's take a quick look at uh, some configurations for switches. We've been doing this very, you know, kind of a, called a series switch where the switching element is in series with our RF path. You can also do a shunt switch where uh, essentially turning the diode on will short out the signal itself. Okay. You know, some of these may have better isolation in different applications. You could also do a, uh, a com compound switch where you have a series element and a shunt element. And depending on you know uh, whether you want the path to be on or off, you can actually uh, maybe get more isolation uh, you know, between the input and output and make, this, make it a better switch. 
Now, part of the problem, like we said, is that all of this is really for kind of small signal applications, where the RF current is smaller. And uh, because we've got to kind of adhere to what's going on here. Uh, we don't want to, you know, have that RF, that RF signal be large enough to actually turn it off. But there's another thing that we start considering when it comes down to RF applications, and that's something called carrier lifetime, or reverse recovery time. Uh, Any time that uh, a diode is turned on, there's some charge that gets stored in the junction. And in order to turn that diode off, that charge has to be removed. Okay, so um, and you know, so even if you instantly turn the bias off in the diode, there's still some charge that has to come out before the diode actually gets turned off. Um, so that will affect the ability or you know, the operation of the circuit, but also has some uh, some interesting implications when we start talking about a different type of diode. Uh, many times when you talk about RF pin or RF diode switches, you talk about something called pin diodes, okay, a PIN. Now, a PIN diode actually stands for kind of the structure of the semiconductor, it stands for, you know, because normally a junction diode is just a PN junction kind of together, okay, but a, PN, a PIN diode has a, an intrinsic or very, very lightly doped region in between the P-type and N-type materials. And that actually uh, has some advantages for us and takes away some of the limitations of some of the other PN junctions when we use this as switches. So this intrinsic region will actually store a lot of charge, okay? And obviously, the, the, again, we, the diode won't get turned off until all that charge is removed. And that charge, to, to remove that charge takes a while. So uh, the carrier lifetime in this type of diode is actually quite long, meaning it has a long reverse recovery time. So what that means is that this type of a diode, a pin diode, is really a bad rectifier, right? Because it won't turn off very quick. Okay, but as a switch, it might turn off very quick. All right, because you think about switches, that they don't have to operate as fast as a as a rectifier. But for, there would be a lousy rectifier. But um, but having this intrinsic region gives us some advantages here because uh, if you don't give it enough time to pull all that charge out, the switch doesn't turn off. So at high frequencies, uh, there isn't enough time to remove all that charge. So the really the significant thing here that makes this really useful is that. Uh, we can use this as a switch for RF currents that are much greater than the bias current. I mean, a real common uh, application might be a, a pin diode that you bias on with, say, 50 milliamps, and that could be used to switch RF currents of, of an amp or more. Okay, so that certainly greatly exceeds what we saw in that IV curve, but it's all because of the stored charge in the PIN diode, so or in, the, in the PIN structure. So that makes it really useful. Uh, for RF switches, even for RF power switching. But it's only typically useful for VHF and above because uh, the carrier lifetimes, while being slow, are not slow enough to work down at the lower HF frequencies. So, you, I mean, it's, so it's kind of tough to make a PIN diode that would work at, at lower HF, but you get up uh, upwards of 30, 50 megahertz or above, uh, pin diode switching is actually works really well, even for power applications. Okay. Now, there are, there are, diodes you can get that are that work for HF and there are amplifiers that use them and it's just that they're pretty expensive okay so the other thing that's kind of nice is that the the intrinsic uh, region and the doping that's applied in the PNN are designed in such a way to make the resistance okay remember we talked about uh, this this being kind of a current controlled resistor the current controlled resistance is actually quite linear in the PIN so in some sense this looks like a current controlled resistor so we can, by controlling how much current we pass through the PIN structure, we can control essentially the resistance that's seen by the RF path going through it. So not only can we turn the diode on or off to make a switch, we can also use it as a variable resistor, which means we could do things like make attenuators, modulators, phase shifters, things like that, by simply adjusting the bias through a pin diode to change the resistance and then use that change in resistance in the circuit to create you know, these various types of functions. So anyway, I hope uh, this kind of helped you to understand uh, how diodes can be used as switches, whether they're, uh, you know, small signal RF switches like we looked at here and some of those schematics from the QRP transceivers, and then uh, where this whole thing called pin diodes fits into the picture. I wish I had one here to play with, but I don't. So, um, but uh, we're these PIN diodes have got some advantages uh, of being able to switch higher power levels and having this kind of linear resistance versus bias current characteristic that can be really useful 
in RF circuits. So thanks again. Comments and questions are always welcome. Thank you.